Welcome, everyone. Thanks for being here. It's Documentation Office Hours, the 11th of <laughs> the 11th August. of August. August. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that for the brief, uh, the brief loss of consciousness there. Mm. I think it'll come back eventually. Great. All right. Thanks. Topics I've got. Google Summer of Code, uh, upcoming LTS, uh, a question and a document structure topic for discussion in terms of how should we structure this particular section. This is one that raised by Kevin. And how to describe the process of choosing a plug-in bill of materials if we've got time. And the others, I think, could wait for another, another session. I'm a little weary today, and so I'm hesitant to say that we'll do more than 30 minutes today, just because it's been a very long day. Oh. Are there other topics you want to put on the list? It sounds good. Nope. Okay. All right, Ashutosh, with you here, is there something you'd like to specifically discuss with regard to Docker Compose? Ashutosh, you're muted. Okay, well, so if, if something oh, comes okay. up, there he is. Oh, go ahead, Ashutosh. Is there something you wanted to specifically show to us or or bring to the to this session of Doc's office hours? Can you can you guys hear me? Can now, yes. Okay. Yep. So I I wanted to discuss about how the how eventually we'll uh, work uh, for documentation to update uh, for the Docker tutorials. Okay. That, that, yeah, that's the main issue. All right, so let's, let's, I think that's a, a good one to discuss. So what we have today, we have a GitHub repository for Jenkins.io that includes the tutorials, right, with all their details. And we have Docker containers. Whoops. Yeah. Containers provided for each weekly and LTS release. Uh, controller, we have Docker containers provided for uh, agents. And I believe you're using SSH agents, correct? Yes. Okay. So, however, what we, and, and then the other thing we have is an awful, ugly, horrible uh, uh, set of instructions. Okay, that's unkind, but we've got but a very How do you really feel? Yeah, we've got a, a, a complicated set of instructions, <laughs> right? Is that a good way to say it, Ashutosh? So what we what what we want in the future is we want all those those first three things, but then we also want I believe Docker containers for the for use by Docker Compose. Is that correct, Ashutosh? Yes, so, so that the uh, user does uh, not build the, the does does not build the the container. Yes, so right now we are uh, using uh, my personal uh, Docker Hub repository for this. Sorry, you're using, say that again. I he didn't hear the what you were using. Uh, right now we are using my personal Docker Hub repository oh, okay. for uh, this, hosting the images. But in future, we'll uh, uh, shift to the official Jenkins one. Okay, but so you're already storing the containers today yes right now we are using them as images good okay so we just need need to enlist help from the infra team to create a repository for the container definitions and that's currently in your account i assume 
Yes. Uh, we have also created uh, GitHub action uh, files for uh, whenever there are changes to the uh, Docker, uh, Docker files, uh, it automatically creates and updates the images. Okay. Do we need uh, a policy for how many old ones we continue to hold up there? Or usually, usually we just keep them all. So with every other container set we have, we just keep them all. The hoarder in me loves that answer. So well, and and it's it's simpler because I don't know of a way. It's it's uncommon for people to dispose of old containers on Docker Hub. Okay. Okay, so Docker Hub location for the container images. And that's currently Ashutosh's personal. Good. All right. Then once we have those, we'll need a pull request to Jenkins.io to um, use the new container for the tutorials. And the uh, let's see. I don't recall if we had it in the install guide or not. I think we did, right? Mm -hmm. We do have, I think. Okay, yes. good. Did that? Does that describe the future state well enough? Yes. Uh, so I wanted to ask the questions about uh, how exactly should I create the pull request? Like, should I create one uh, big pull request containing everything, or should I? separate it out in small batches. So Mark prefers small, small pull requests, one per tutorial, uh, one for the install guide. And I'd rather we have one arrive and it be reviewed before you do the others in case there are some surprises. So what about maybe the we... old instructions? Do we need to retain those any place for anybody who wants to use them, or is don't... anybody who would choose that as such a mutant that we don't want them messing with Jenkins anyhow? I don't think we need to retain the old ones, but we'll have them in GitHub's history in the Git repository history. So okay. if we need to bring them back, we certainly can. Okay. So Ashutosh, does that answer your question in terms of pull requests? Yes. Okay. And I also wanted to get your views on another uh, thing. Okay. Uh, like one of the tutorials uh, contains, uh, like highly depends on the Blue Ocean plugin. Uh huh. And we we were thinking uh, that we uh, will avoid using Blue Ocean plugins since it's not being updated. Okay. Uh, but since that one requires it highly, uh, do uh, we were thinking of uh, not updating that one fully uh, like uh, we are trying to get rid of docker and docker and everyone every tutorial mm -hmm. so we are thinking if we should uh, update that that uh, tutorial or not yeah and well so well i agree views. so so my view is even though blue ocean is not actively developed i'd rather not sacrifice i'd rather not sacrifice the tutorial due to Blue Ocean's less active development. Not, yeah. Because we expect them to discard these container images anyway. No reason to hide, to, to not include Blue Ocean in the, so now let's ask Meg and Chris. I think that the Blue, the tutorials should include Blue, Blue Ocean and that you should update this one so that we get rid of Docker and Docker completely. But if that's huge, if that's bigger than will fit in the time you've got, I understand if that one doesn't make it. I would agree with that. Yeah, me I too. still think Blue Ocean is a great way to get started with Jenkins. Yep. Yeah, okay. I also like Blue Ocean when I first used Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I'm I'm now strongly partial to Pipeline Graph Viewer, but but I'm also a very different user than the first-time users, right? I am not a first-time yes. Jenkins user. The thing I like is there's a bunch of just tedious crap you have to do to get where any you can make anything happen. And with Blue Ocean, that becomes very easy. 
and you can see what Jenkins is. And I think you pretty quickly see that Blue Ocean is pretty cumbersome if you wanted to use it for production, but. Right, and and you, you have a good point. And Ashutosh's work actually reduces a big chunk of the tedium in the setup process it it doesn't magically make Jenkins' job definition easy, et cetera. So mm -hmm. yeah, fair. Good. All right. Ashutosh, what other questions do you have? That's it. Um, thank you for answering this. And, okay. Uh, I'm also thinking of uh, including Blue Ocean uh, because I, when I first used Jenkins, I the first tutorial I saw was with Blue Ocean. So... Yeah, I like Blue Ocean. Good. All right. And and I understand if your mentors say, hey, but Blue Ocean is kind of not an actively developed thing. They're correct. It's not. But mm -hmm. it works. And it works yes. well for the tutorial. Great. All right. Next topic then, version documentation for Jenkins.io. So Chris, I believe Vandit is still planning on a demonstration next Wednesday or Thursday? Yep, and also in maybe in our demonstration to talks of its hours. Um, oh, oh, good. Next okay. Friday, so it's like August eighth. Oh, oh, good. All right. Yeah. To Docs Office Hours Europe. Europe, yeah, because like he he can make it to this time. So. Oh, good. That but oh, that Kevin would love to have. Uh, Kevin and Bruno both, I'm sure, would enjoy that. That would be great. Okay, I'll be there too. All right. And so you you say you're planning for that next week? Yep, next right. uh, Friday. So that will be the 7th. Or is it Thursday? 16th. It yeah, is. it's Thursday. It's Thursday. Thursday. So next week, because... August 17. Okay. 2023 EU time. Yep. Great. Excellent. Anything else on version documentation? I think um, I think today's the first meeting after Vendis exam that we're going to talk about like um, how to fix the entire site because there's okay. some issues with it still. But um, tomorrow's meeting will carry on and we'll talk about like um, how to proceed for the block feature. All right. Very good. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Um, probably not. All right. Thanks, Chris. Thanks very much for your leadership there. You're welcome. So on GitLab plugin modernization, next meeting on that one is in about 12 hours. And uh, Mark's testing still has some questions. I just posted them. Uh, but the code code is working right so that's good yeah two and and it looks up looks positive okay great anything else on google summer of code um, no all right next topic then was upcoming long-term support release we'll release it re the the release candidate released wednesday and ready for people to start testing. The change log and upgrade guide pull request is available, needs review. I haven't reviewed it yet and probably won't be able to review it until after I return from vacation. If others can review it, that'd be great, but it, it will need to wait. Any questions on LTS? Okay, so now we've got a structural question, and this one is a uh, Meg and Chris, in particular, with your experience on documentation structure, this is for, for your, your consideration. So we have on the Jenkins documentation site a number of documents that are not directly linked into the left side navigation. So for instance, if we look at Linux, and we look at the prerequisites document here, you'll see at the in the section called prerequisites, there are links to hardware recommendations, links to software requirements. And these are useful and valuable policy documents, right? They talk about 
hey, we only support Linux versions that the vendor supports. The Jenkins project won't support unsupported Linux versions. We only support certain servlet containers and certain specific versions of those useful things, but they're nowhere in this index on the mm. in the the navigation on the left. Now, Kevin noted, hey, maybe for this, that's okay. But then we've got some other things that are, for example, the upgrade guide from Java 8 to Java 11, the upgrade guide from Java 11 to Java 17. Um, eventually here in the next few months, the upgrade guide from Java 17 to Java 21. And those are not linked anywhere immediately obvious at least, but you have to get lucky and find them. Usually it's updating to Java 11. And even that didn't find it. So update. Huh? Yeah. So that's my search. Marsh, my search tools are my search skills are weak, apparently. But the answer there is this upgrade Java guidelines and Java to 17 is not linked in anywhere linked into the documentation navigation anywhere. And what Kevin was asking is, should we consider putting in a section that might be called support policy underneath system administration? So in system administration, we have right now a, an expanding subsection called reverse proxy configuration. The thought was, should we add a new sec subsection to submit system administration that is again an expanding section that has support policies or has, and I'm not sure it's support policies or if we call it something else, um, platform documents or general, I, I don't know. Yeah, the title is tough, but but I definitely like the idea. Well, so so help me with the title then, because yeah. the kinds of things in it, Kevin lists them here. All right, so Jenkins on Java 11. That's how do you run, how do you do the transition to Java 11? Jenkins on Java 17. There will be a Jenkins on Java 21. Java.adoc is our, I believe, our general Java support policy. Let's look and see if I'm, I'm even right about that. Java. Yes. Okay. This is the Java requirements document where we say you must have one of the job supported Java versions. We don't support other Java versions. So we've got support policies. Then we've got the upgrade guide. So let's look at that one. Jenkins on Java 11. Uh, apparently not. What about calling the section something like platform reference, which yeah. would make oh. it a free for all? And but that is the point. I mean, if if this is my if I'm a new administrator installing Jenkins for the first time, this stuff isn't that useful, and I should be reading the guides that'll point me to it when I need it anyhow. Yeah. But this is something that that uh that an advanced, experienced person might need to go to regularly. Um, is it references or weapons? Good, good question. Okay, so we we generally have used gerunds here in the heading. So viewing backup authenticating. Hmm. So I I I confess, platform references would be fine with me as well. Platform reference. Reference but, info gets around the singular or plural, but it makes for a longer. Well, uh, how that. about platform information? Ah, that works. That works too, yeah. I could dance to that. Okay, so if the idea then would be in the system administration section, and Meg, what you said resonated with Kevin as well, was when I'm doing the install, it's a natural thing to read the prerequisites. Right. But when I'm 
after I've done the install, it is not natural to come back here and look at the prerequisites again. Right. Right. When I'm in system administration mode, it's natural to look in the system admin section. And the fact that there isn't a platform information section here yeah. is a hindrance. So I platform like that. Information is better than reference. I like that. I mean, another might be platform details. But Maybe. I think, well, I'm open to either. What comments? I like platform information because there might be something yeah. in there that isn't terribly detailed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good point. I like that. Okay. All right. Good. I think you well, think as broad as possible. So, because you've got this stuff now, I'm thinking once you have the section, you're going to find other things you want to put in there. Right. Right. Well, and and it it fits. This is sort of these are the kinds of things that are discussed in the platform special interest group. They really are. Shall we shall we support web browser X Y Z? Shall we? support windows version this or that shall we support this or that linux version and and those those are very much platform sig things so using the word platform feels really good to me yeah yeah okay good thank you we have we have an answer i'll pass that along to kevin great thanks very Tell much kevin i like the way he thinks <laughs> i will pass that along to him I, as well <laughs> i've noticed that before but this is very very good great yeah. All right, so next topic, and this will probably be our last topic because I'm I'm sort of running out of gas. I'm running out of steam here. But this one is an open question on how best to describe a complicated technical topic. So here I'm going to open it and let's look at it and talk about it because I want some coaching. Uh, the submitter on this gave some good ideas, but but the real challenge here is we're I'm trying to describe something to a developer that is, at least for me in describing, rather complicated. Okay, so here's the story, how it goes. Jenkins plugins have versions, right? And their versions have different capabilities. Usually it's that a new version gets more capabilities than an old version did. But Not versions always. are, right, versions change. And those versions, one of the complications for a plugin maintainer is that when I'm writing automated tests that depend on other plugins, I must explicitly list the version number of those other plugins. And that becomes nightmarish to manage because I have to find the set of plugin versions that all work together. So we have this thing called a plugin bill of materials that avoids that problem by generating a set of plugins that are known to work together. Mm. And so this plugin bill of materials is very helpful for me as a plugin maintainer. I insert this little bit of thing into my into my plugins palm.xml file and magically I can now refer to a plugin without caring what ver to, without having to specify the version because the version is embedded in this bill of materials. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've you go oh go ahead question. It seems nice. Oh yeah, I love it. it. This is and in fact we use it in the GitLab plugin. We use it in many 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 plugins and are very very happy with it. It works very well. However, this this the question came from this person saying, "What's the value that I put here?" Because notice the ellipsis there is admitting not clear what value you should put there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not explicit. Right. And, and the reason it's not explicit is, is, all right, on one hand, new releases of this thing come out all the time. So let's go look at those new releases. For instance, we're going to scroll down here and look at, here are the releases. So a release came out yesterday. And another, and, and you'll notice the release number is not some immediately obvious number. It's complicated, okay. long string of, of bits. And last week there was a release. And the week before that, there was a release. And the week before that. So, so however, these releases are tied specifically to 
a subset of the total available versions. And that's where the explanation gets complicated. Okay, so what, what, um, what Kyle Leonard asked was, hey, how do I choose the version? And so I tried to explain it. And he asked some questions. First was, hey, I know what the artifact ID is. Should I, I choose the one that's like my Jenkins version? So up here, bomb-2.387.x is like Jenkins 2.387.3. So it's good that those match. And, and my answer was, it's good, but not strictly enforced. So it is, it is highly recommended, but not strictly enforced. However, there is something that is strictly enforced. When I choose a bomb line, a release line, there are numbers that I can't go bigger than because we stopped doing bill of materials releases on those older lines. So two, this 346, the last version was this, and then releases on that line stopped while releases on 361 continued until this point, and then 375 until this point. And now 387 is active and the 2312 that's listed here is actually already out of date. It's now 2329. Okay, so the complication here is how to describe how they choose the version. And now one idea is tell them to use Dependabot and let it do the work for them. And I, I really like that version, that, that choice, because that helps them get it updated regularly anyway. However, that's, that doesn't help them choose the initial value for that version. Okay, now, some alternatives. Now we're, we're up to the, or any questions so far, Meg or Chris, either of you? No, I half understand what you said, so. Okay, well, and, and part of the problem here is I, I found this quite a complicated topic as I was learning it myself, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that I'm explaining it clearly and effectively even now. And I feel like I, I grasped the concept very well, but it might be well suited to have diagrams or something. You know how sometimes we have stacked bars where there's a, a release life cycle. Ubuntu 18 lives for this long. And then the next step is 20 and then 22. And these lines are sort of like that in that they reach a point where we stop doing any additional releases on that line. And so maybe a picture like that might help people visualize, oh, that's what happens. This this one is hot. It's the changing one. These others have become immutable. They won't won't change any further. Why is 2.401.x not the hottest one? Oh, it it's that we we maintain two or three or sometimes even four that are hot. That okay, are so the last two are actually hot. Right, the last two, and actually, right now there's even one more bomb-2.414.x is also hot with the same thing. Okay. So, so this question from looking, how, if you're not explaining it to me, how do I know what's hot? You don't. And, and that's, that's, and, and that's, that's why, that's why the first story is you should use Dependabot so that you, you know, if the, so that Dependabot will take care of you and propose pull requests if there is a new version on your line. So, so that was why this idea says, yeah, you should use Dependabot, but it doesn't help you choose the initial version. And the initial version needs to be found by looking at the available releases. So one technique I used was here, look at this page. I know you're you're not accustomed to reading <laughs> web pages with lists of version numbers, but here it is. So here we see 2.387.x, and at the very bottom is the most recent version, 2329. 
So this thing is the authoritative location for version numbers of these bill of materials. Like, let's go back to 2.346.x. There's the that the final version, the terminal version of that of that line. I got a question though. It's like, do the, all the hot versions got the same uh, version number? They do. Well, okay. and. and and now it's it's uh, that's that's accurate as far as it goes. So if you look at four fourteen, it has three versions in it because it didn't exist prior to this twenty two seventy eight release. If we look at four oh one, you'll see twenty two seventy eight was preceded by by many, but. 414 didn't exist yet so when 414 came into existence this is when it came into existence so so the authoritative place to find these releases is in this directory structure so part of me is tempted to just tell people go go navigate to this location and read it it'll tell you what what the the latest version is the other the other technique I use, but it, it requires some, some reading, is I'll go to this site and look at the releases, but I have a personal bias towards only supporting my plugins on hot versions, right? I mm -hmm. <laughs> Plugins that, that aren't on hot versions uh, are not, not as interesting to me. So I tend to base either on 387 or something newer than that. All right. So coaching comments, what do you think? What's in, is, is there a, uh, some recommendation on ways that you think would make it easier to understand how to make those choices? Could have some stories. I mean, I'm thinking that when in doubt, a good starting place would be the most recent, right? Yeah. In fact, that is the, that is the strongly preferred. That's most true. recent is strongly preferred because most recent has the best set of the most recent set and the largest set of plugins that are part of part of the the bill of materials right but now maybe i have to support older versions too and and that's and that's one of those choosing which version to support we've already got a page that guides people on that right the uh -huh. we've got a page that guides them about how do you make the compromise be between this minimum Jenkins version or that minimum Jenkins version. And, and this should probably link to that to, to remind them choosing this thing is in fact choosing a Jenkins minimum version. Also, it, it, you should keep them together. They should kept be kept in lockstep. Yeah. You know, I think the way, I mean, so you're not going to cookbook it, but it's a general thing that you could use the way you explained it. I mean, written up is pretty good. It's a soft thing, you know, start with the most current version, try it and see what happens. Do some testing um, for bonus points. Use robo dot two to do right. a test, you know, and compare those two mm -hmm. and look at these lists to see and make sure you can understand what, okay. to see, you know, it is. It's. I think it's like chicken sexing. It's like one of those things that's really, really hard to choose to tell somebody else, but you let them sort of watch how you would do that. And maybe even take an example of one and you say, you know, I did this and here was the problem I found. And so by looking here and here and here, I figured out that this was the cause of the problem. And Good. so I changed. Okay. Now, one of the things that I'd considered was just putting into this document, into this section here, putting into the, or not, sorry, into the, into the top level readme, this thing right here, examples that do, that go back to the older bombs. So import the latest bomb. We could put another subsection here that says, um, earlier Jenkins versions and then list 2.361 and say, this is the first version to support Java 11, 2.346. This is the last version to support Java 8. And, and that would give then the version in those cases would be explicit 
and non-varying, right? right? So we could we could document that and say, hey, here is Java 8, the final version, the terminal version. Uh, here is the first version that did Java 11 required. And, and this one is the, the, the latest bomb is the preferred. Now, another would be, we could probably use update CLI to script this thing to actually insert the explicit value there. It would just require somebody with update CLI skills to do it. Yeah. So maybe, actually, maybe I talked to Bruno Verachten about that because he knows how to do that quite well. Let me make myself a note. Oh. But whatever you do, you're also talking about some maintenance here. Because yeah. soon I'm going to be looking for the last version that supports Java 11 and the first that supports Java 17. And, right. Well, and, and, and before we you make... know it, it's going to be Java 3.7. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I'm, I'm not going to go there, but OK, that's. So update the, the version string explicitly that the benefit of that is then it, it avoids any explanation, right? We don't have to tell people how to choose it. They, we just say, copy and paste this text, you're set. Are they um, always set if they do that? Uh, yes, yes. If, if it doesn't work when they do that, then they've got some other changes they need to make. And the other changes need further guidance they may have to ask on a developer list or somewhere else, hey, what do I do? This didn't work as smoothly as I hoped. Okay. So they would, but it wouldn't, it isn't like they have to go back. I mean, I can see some of these, you know, that like six months ago, I needed to support both Java 11 and Java 17. So do I need to, can I do that with one version or do I need two versions or something? Yeah, I still so, think a nice little, I mean, you, the blogs, I don't know, blogs are so often, you know, light things with general purpose, but I still think the story of you working through one or two of them might be very nice and it wouldn't need to be updated. I mean, when you tell them what you had to do for Java 11 or something, they can extrapolate that when they're looking at Java 32. Okay. Well, now that's, that's an interesting idea because we might use that as seed material for Hacktoberfest. Ah. Right, because that's a, a good point. Certainly there are plenty of places in the Jenkins plugin in, plug -in ecosystem where this is not yet applied or where it's been applied, but the, the contents have improved and the plugin did not keep up. So mm -hmm. they've they're they're specifying things they don't need to and and so it's yeah good good idea okay good yeah but I always wanted to have put a corner in the docs with like hints hints from the curd mudgeon with Darren Pope's things that were always like not a fit, but you know make a persona out of it mm -hmm. and we should make a persona out of you too because the two of you are obviously yeah. a good you know you know you're you're more by the book than he is but you know but something where it identifies it's a persona and these are some you know here's uncle mark sitting down and explaining how he does this <laughs> and and it works and you might come up with you know not saying you know this is the way you have to do it or else you're going to you know be a turn to the eighth circle of hell for life or something but uh i do love dante references very good <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right thank you that covered the topics i had any other hot topics before we close for that and let me get some sleep no, sorry ashutas go ahead no i just said no i just oh. didn't say anything okay great all right then recording will be available probably within 24 hours thanks everybody have thank a great you. time sleep tight thanks yep. thank you.